hate puppies. It's a good podcast. I feel threatened. Mr. Blutarski, 0.0. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Ballot House, the only podcast dedicated to solving first world problems. Yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you. How are you? <laughs> what we do. That's Doing right. good. <laughs> Stu, why did you go with an animal house drop there? Well, because I think one of the... I think that drop is going to be relevant to one of the topics we may discuss later on. I'm looking at my topics, and I don't know which one it is. What has no alcohol? Hmm. Okay. I see where you're going with that. I got it. It was a 0.0 point. I got it. (laughs) I got it now. Connect the dots. Well, buried the lead on that one. (laughs) Well, you asked for it. (laughs) I did, because I was very confused. I was like, at what point are we talking about Belushi? Yeah. I was like, I don't see him anywhere here on the list, as much as I would like to talk about Belushi. Where is 40-year-old movie quotes on my list? I'm confused. (laughs) Uh, Mr. (laughs) Blutow. Oh, well, what's going on, everybody? I hope you all have had a good week. This is the official week. Leading up to Thanksgiving, our next episode will come out post-Thanksgiving. Yes. So, strangely, I'd like to wish you a happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. I mean, that is so crazy because... Does not feel it. No, and we're recording so far. This is one of the weird things about recording the way we do. You know, we're so far behind. Or ahead. That we're we're the future and the past. Yeah. 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 (laughs) But so it is is so odd to, like, when you try to look at the space-time continuum so this came up this morning in my uh staff meeting what is the one what's your one turkey day food that you're really looking forward to Ooh, for me it's always green bean casserole i don't get it any other time of year i love green bean casserole but i wonder if i'll even get it this year because thanksgiving has been kind of ruined <laughs> as far as like being able to see family and friends Yeah, y'all aren't doing anything right No, we usually host and officially pulled the plug on that i mean it's like, that sucks i mean just about everybody who comes to our thanksgiving is older yeah so we decided to, to pull and the out plug. of town yeah i mean we're coming in from all over it's just it's a bummer because i love doing it you know i've always enjoyed hosting thanksgiving i actually far prefer that to oh yeah you know going somewhere for thanksgiving even though there's all the headache of actually hosting and doing all that i'm like Heck yeah. The that's comfort what, of being in your that's own home. Thanks, that's Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. They're on the some headaches. level. Yeah, the headaches are a big part of it. But oh, yeah. It's six hours of prep for, you know, 20 to 30 minutes of uh, eating. So, <laughs> but, you know, the leftovers make it worth it. Definitely. Yeah, my go-to leftover is always just butter on bread, pepper, and turkey. Yep. Love that. Yep. Yeah. My grandma used to make that every year after Thanksgiving and. It's actually the part I look forward to more than anything. So you know what, Stu? I take my answer back. Uh-oh. My favorite thing is buttered <laughs> bread with cracked pepper and then leftover. Just, and just leftover <laughs> turkey on it, cold on a piece of white bread. Like that, yeah. to me, that's perfect. Cold turkey sandwiches are pretty good. I like I like any turkey or ham. I can ham. eat it all the time. I like my grandmother passed down these. Uh, actually, I think it's my great grandmother passed down a set of the. I was about to say, I'm so sorry. No, I was like, <laughs> I was like passed down a set of the uh, <laughs> cast iron cornbread sticks skillets, and this make the best cornbread sticks. And just pat a butter on top of each. What's like, a cornbread light. stick skillet? Uh, excuse like it's my... a ca- it's a cast iron it's cast iron. Yeah, I follow but it's, that. It's rows of cornbread sticks. So you just pour the you pour the, the batter, batter right, right into in. it, and stick it. So in the instead oven. of making one big old thing a of cornbread, it's a yeah. bunch of sticks. So you yeah. make bread sticks. Yeah, yeah. for the cornbread. cornbread. And you had really to have good. your own. You cast probably iron. make the cornbread that's like legit too, with like pieces of corn in it and all that stuff. No, I don't like the. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like the. I don't bits like of corn. it either. No, yeah. the batter we use is just straight up, just batter. There's no. Yeah, I like it's cornbread, but it's. I like cornbread batter, just the straight up. That and just stuff. And you got to have a fried turkey. There's a uh, there's a Chicago style pizza. There's Here we a, go. There's a place called. What, what marker are we at? <laughs> I mean that didn't four forty one. Let Damn. me guess. The Chicago people make the best Thanksgiving meal of all time. I wasn't going to say that, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why one city would be better yeah. at it than another I don't city. <laughs> I don't know. We will never know. I just don't understand your yeah. your logic. Random. It's and, my. It's the way I think. No, clearly. But the state of Arizona now. Now we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> no. 
Uh, no, there's this place <laughs> in Chicago. So there's like there's three main Chicago style pizza chains that everyone kind of they fights, argue over. fights yeah. between. You know, you got right. Giordano's, you got Gino's East, Sabaros, and, and you got Luminaldi. No, that's New York style. <laughs> <laughs> now Gino's East uses a cornmeal in their crust Ooh. to make their deep dish pizza, Beach and pizza. <laughs> and for years now. Like, I always go to Luminaldi's or I go to Giordano's, and those are the two that battle it out for me. And I've never had Gino's East because every time I go to it, I always stop short and go, but what if it's not as good? It's cornmeal. Yeah. It might not be as good. I'm out. And, yeah. I, and I panic, uh. and I panic, and I walk away from the, the, the whole thing. And it, it's like this glaring blind spot. And I've been aware of it for decades, and I literally – Every time, hey, I'm going to go. No, nah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I do the same thing at every restaurant I like. Like, if I have an A1 with a bullet at a restaurant, right. I eat it every single time. And everybody I ever eat meals with multiple times, I go, why do you get the same thing? I'm like, one, it's my A1 with a bullet, top dog, the end. It's not like I eat this restaurant four or five times a week. I get here once or twice a month. I'm not going to I'm not gonna roll the dice on something else. I know I love this. See, but you don't. It, so my my counter argument is you don't know it's the A one with the bullet because you haven't even tried the other things. You just told me a story about you not trying a different pizza. <laughs> I, okay, I'm not I'm not saying that I'm not gu guilty of such yes. things. I do it too. But like if I go to a restaurant, I often do try to like move around the menu a little. Have you? How many times have you been surprised with something different that you didn't know you already like that beat out your first? choice really the only time i ever find that being the case i'm a big chicken parm guy it's hard when you go to an italian place and you see the right. chicken parm yeah. it's very hard not to go let me just get the exactly. chicken parm yeah exactly so i do move in italian places yeah. i'm more adventurous i tend to move around and then like every fourth visit i'll go yeah. back to the chicken parm but to your point usually i can find something that's like almost as good yeah yeah i rarely go you're out yeah. Chicken parm, go screw. Like I have I have replaced you for life. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't happen often. Nope. But Gino's East might be that thing and I feel like a piece of crap that I refuse to do it. Well, <laughs> you got two strong leaders in the clubhouse, so it's hard to I do. And yeah. That's the and, the, and <laughs> only one of them deviates from the recipe. Yeah. You know, they they use cornmeal in there mixed in with the crust. Could be awesome though. Could be. I it's mean, mixed in, or is it all cornmeal? It's not all corn. It's not like not, not like a cornbread crust, but they okay. just use cornmeal in the crust. Probably so it makes it a little sweeter, psh, taste wise. <laughs> 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 it just freaks me out, you know. Like, ooh, I didn't, I didn't know I was gonna like that. Uh, that does happen sometimes in life, though. Ooh, yeah. I, didn't think I would enjoy that as much as I did. Yeah. I'm a, so I like. <laughs> I guess I'm a weirdo now. I'm a I'm a big key lime pie guy. I like key lime pie. Okay. And I like cheesecake. And wherever I go, if I'm at a different restaurant for the first time and they have it, if they have one of those two, I'll order one of those just to see who's bringing in the best pie. My Schwann's guy was here just about two hours ago. Oh yeah. And I and we were I was having the argument: Do I want a key lime pie or do I want the cheesecake? <laughs> I opted for cheesecake. Um, to me, a slice of regular cheesecake beats out everything. There's no. That's the it, conclusion I came like to. Like regular <laughs> re ice cream cake, regular cake, every pie they can all kick rocks. Like just a good slice of cheesecake. Mm -hmm. That's what I. None get. of the fancy uh, swirls. Swirls. What's the What's the uh, restaurant that has a cheesecake ge factory? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, how did I forget that? I don't know. I, there's a place that has tacos. Yeah. It's a place food joint. It's, it's something Bell. Something Bell. I don't. I just can't. But they recall. do all the like different cheesecakes, and it's like your your yeah. plain New York cheesecake's the best. I don't mind the like. I don't mind a little bit of the chocolate swirl. I don't mind plain cheesecake or you know something that's got a different crust. But forget the fruit, the syrups, the caramel, yeah. all that stuff. I just plain. Yeah, actually, so that's what sold it for me. I said, "What flavors the cheesecake do you have?" And he pulled up his app, and he goes, I just have regular cheesecake. And I was like, then yeah. that's what I want. Yep. <laughs> because had he said blueberry, chocolate swirl, yeah. caramel, and regular, I might have gone key lime. But when he limited me from all, I was like, oh, boy, does that sound good. Yep. Probably yeah. tastes like cheesecake. Yep. I, I agree with you. And it's the good, best. The good graham cracker crust is what makes it. 
That's what's going to be interesting because this is a frozen one that you let thaw. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if you can always get that crust right in that thaw scenario. Uh, believe it or not, go into your local food line because I get it from my girls. They have a variety cheesecake that's like two slices. It's like eight slices or oh, ten yeah. slices. But I know the ones. But it's gluten free. Gross. And the crust is I'm it's, out. It's <laughs> yeah. so it's so good. Can't tell the difference. But. I think it's a pretty good, but it's a frozen cheesecake. You let it thaw, and it's, Ken, when it comes I, out my pretty celiacs good. doesn't act up. <laughs> yeah. This is bullshit. Yeah. I'm for not all, eating for, this. For all those listeners it's been an hour, there. I'm not on the toilet yet. Yeah. So disappointed. Yeah, what kind of horrible cheesecake yeah. is this? Well, for all you guys out there that are in the same boat, go to Food Line, get the cheesecake. <laughs> all of them are naturally gluten-free, or you have to order the gluten-free cheesecake? Well, no, it's a it's a pre-made frozen cheesecake. Yeah, some that's brand. Good. Variety, it's brand. It's oh, like gotcha, four, 14 gotcha. bucks for the pie. Yeah, I have no idea what I paid for my pie. I don't ask questions when no. the Schwanz guy is here. <laughs> no. He and I are doing a very, very, very subtle dance. There's, yep. no, there's no price. He doesn't give you prices. You don't ask. My other guy used to. He'd be like, all right, that would be like twenty two ninety nine. dollars I could be like, ooh, that's a little steep yeah. for that. This guy's just like, plunk. Oh, you got a what new else? Schwanz guy. Oh, sw- new Schwanz guy since I came to this house. He's oh, been- okay. Yeah, that guy's been coming around for a minute. Yeah. My, other, my old Schwanz guy used to come out to the old... I'm this Swans guy, tree. he's he's like a tree guy. He knows when he's having a slow month, just swing by. And, <laughs> I'll order. And you will take care of him. My tree guy showed up here on Friday. Yeah. He just just knocked on my door. I was like, I don't really have any tree work. Ten minutes later, he's taking down limbs. He's cutting yeah. up stuff. <laughs> it's amazing how I don't have tree work till I walk around the yard with him. Yeah. And we, we wrestle with our language barrier and come to the conclusion, $500 sounds good, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Why won't he take some of this dead wood? <laughs> That he keeps adding to that. Yeah, that's, oh, his he's, pile. that's his keep putting there. Yeah. He he chopped all that up. Uh, he is the man on his own, like a straight, full grown man. He is, and he's like two feet shorter than me. Uh, and he's like swinging the axe, all man, all man. He's like, <laughs> didn't he have his like wife and kids and stuff out here chopping that tree up? Yeah, I've come home before to find the kids in the treehouse, and I'm yeah. like, oh, there's kids here. Okay. Nice. Brendan said he's all man. He's just Brendan sitting on the back porch saying, "Take your shirt off. Let me see you chop that wood." Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. Work of a sweat. Lose, lose the shirt. I don't know how I'd like to see his kids when you're play on your play uh fort whatever your. I got set, nervous because I was like, that I don't thing want them is to get hurt. on his last leg. Absolutely, man. <laughs> you don't want him to like one of his kids to fall off and sue your ass. Yeah. Oh, no. she's gonna shut that swing set down. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, you weren't wearing it. Your kids weren't wearing a hard hat. And this yeah. technically, they're. I didn't see any fall protection. <laughs> that's that's not on me. Yeah, you said you were licensed and insured. Yeah, wear which, the gloves. Which he he was licensed and insured the first time he gave me his card. It said it right on it. Uh oh. The next time he gave me his card, that little byline was gone. Uh. I just think he was saving money because he's yeah. probably paying by the letter. Yeah. It, it, anybody you, can stand here. You, you can leave that off. Guarantee on the box. That's exactly <laughs> it. You know. I could stick my head up a bull's ass, yep. get a good look at a T-bone steak, but I'd rather take the butcher's word for it. Yeah. That's kind of where we were. Yep. Mm. Yeah. He's, he's, he's fine. I think he's fine. He hadn't. Oh, well, sure. luckily you've had all the big trees you need taken down, so now you're just giving him busy work. Yeah, but, well, he's trimming a lot of trees now. I don't want to get rid of any more trees. Yeah. I just want the trees that I have to stop dropping stuff. Yeah. Like gigantic limbs. Yeah. That's sketchy. It is. The sketchy is when the single tr- the guy who shows up by himself and he says, "Yeah, I'll take that tree down." Comes back and he's just by himself. I'm like, "That's yeah. the good thing about my That's guy. All my those guys tree got guys a clown are car for an F-150, dude. It's amazing. <laughs> like he'll open up the back door, kids will come spilling out, his wife will come out, four dudes will come out. I'm like, "How? How did they do that?" Mm. All those tree guys are sketchy. They all come at you with a high price and then they want to haggle with you and it's like you were going to charge me $3,500 to do three hours worth of work. What are you talking about? Yeah. My guy's pretty fair price most of the time. Every once in a while, he'll try to pull one. I'll be like, whoa, we're going to take 300 off of that. Yeah. And he'll be like, done. And then sometimes he'll give you a good deal. You try to haggle, and he's like, it's a good price, friend. <laughs> That's when I know he's serious. He just stops, and he looks, it's a good he's price, He's like, friend. That's as low as I can go. <laughs> yeah. It's like. I was trying to stick it to you, but now we've worked it back down to the good price friend discount. Yeah, I love when that's a good price friend. Okay, we'll stop negotiating on this one. Yeah. Hmm. How much to uh, rebuild the tree swing set? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, I saw something this week that that kind of grossed me out, 
And I guess it was old, but I think it probably comes down to Stu's point. Probably just oh, face, yeah, Facebook yeah. algorithms knowing what we talk yeah. about a lot. Did you see this world record mayonnaise eating? Yeah, well, it was, it was shared on our Facebook page by our friend. So maybe that's how we got it. It maybe. was shared to us. So maybe yeah, she was. I saw it. She was listening to the podcast. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that that might have worked. But yeah, un- unfortunately, this girl ate a boatload of mayonnaise <laughs> in three minutes, and she's she's still. I mean, I'm looking at it. She's still the record holder. Dude, and she's tiny. She's foul. Eighty six point two ounces. Which is three and a half jars. It's also her weight. <laughs> she was an itty bitty thing, dude, and she ate she three a big gigan- old spoon, like, just... like Costco sized jars yeah. of that stuff. It was disgusting, and she's just spooning oh, it in. Yeah. Oh, got the lumberjack plaid shirt on, just going in, oh. which I respect. <laughs> but she she actually grossed me out. Yeah, it was foul. Like. I, I don't know, man. I've seen two girls, one cup. I, I was able to yeah, say yeah, through it. Yeah. I was like fast forwarding through this. I was like, I don't think I can watch this. What is it about mayonnaise? Like, we all love it. Yeah, but you we don't want to eat it like that. No, I don't want mayonnaise by the spoonful. But like, I ever. feel like there's but other you condiments know, you would still eat. Like, you we, wouldn't like to. But like, if somebody gave you a spoonful of ketchup, you'd be like, I was okay. just saying the same thing. A spoonful of mustard, you'd be like, okay. Spoonful of mayonnaise. Everybody's like retching. Yeah. It is weird how that works. Yeah. No, like think of another condiment you that would turn your stomach like that. A spoonful of it. Can you even think of one? Like there's only one that I've ever tried that that ended very poorly for me and that was um wasabi. Yes. <laughs> That's precisely <laughs> it. A spoonful of wasabi. wasabi. I was at a uh, I was at a party. Was it a dare? Oh, you really? Yeah, and this oh, guy had, it. Yeah, you guessed it. That was amazing. <laughs> That's been happening a lot lately. Like I've been out here yesterday I was out here guessing stuff. People were like, You'll never believe what happened. I'm like picking something out of a hat and they're like, I guess I don't even need to tell the story. And I'm like, You're kidding right now. <laughs> that really just happened. That happened like two weeks ago. I walked in walked into the house and the oldest son just comes running around the corner. Dad, you'll never believe what happened to me today. Homeschool, I was like, yeah, dude, let me guess. A bird flew into the window, and you saw it? He was like, he just stared at me. He goes, oh, my God, did Mom tell you? And I go, did that happen? Yeah, it's he the goes, weirdest thing when that happened. He goes, you, didn't, you knew that. Come on, Mom told you. I was like, dude, I'm not, like, I had no idea. I just was reaching for something that maybe could have happened. <laughs> there was one a couple years ago. But you could have you could have used a, that, I, son. My psychic powers. That's right. Are, <laughs> I, yeah, know I know everything. everything. <laughs> I had one. This was a few years ago, but I'm sitting there with a buddy, and our other our other buddy comes over and he's like, "You guys will never believe what just happened to me." He's like, "I was just getting shoes, and guess who walks in and sits right down next to me?" And my buddy goes, "Tom Brokaw," and he's like, "No fucking way." <laughs> 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 He's like, how in the world? We were like, you blew it. You should have been playing lotto yeah. in that moment. <laughs> like, there's a, there's That's, billions yeah, of people. Yeah. Tom broke off. What? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That kills a story too. Like that's a zapper. Like it absolutely. Yeah, does. dude thought he was gonna yeah. like, even like even if he tells a story, you still want to double back to the guy who guessed. Yeah, Tom Brokaw. It's no, like, no longer as impressive no. that you just met Tom Brokaw. Yeah, this dude yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, "Nasty, we get it." Tell the story about how you guessed it before he even told you again. Tell us that story. That story's again. better. <laughs> so speaking of stories that you already told, I'm at this party. <laughs> <laughs> and this dude's got this huge sushi platter. And he's got this big ball of wasabi. Like, because this was like for a whole party platter. Yeah. And like, the party's kind of winding down. And I'm like, wasabi's not that bad. And he's like, you wouldn't eat it. I was like, bro, I'll eat that whole ball of wasabi. He's like, no, you won't. And I was like, yeah, I will. And he's like, all right, I got 20 bucks. Says you won't do it. And I was like, sold. Picked up this big hunking. It was probably a golf ball size. Thing That's a lot of wasabi. I put that thing in my mouth. And the first couple chews, I'm like, this sucker just gave me 20 bucks. Yep. Oh, my gosh. They got back up in your sinuses. Oh, it turns into <laughs> like the thickest, most just foul paste. Yep. I couldn't even. You you physically cannot swallow it. Like you're chewing it up, chewing it up, and then you just can't. You can't bring yourself yeah. to take it down. I sat there and chewed on it, 
tears streaming down my face, just sweating. Were people laughing their oh, asses they were, off? Oh, they were going nuts, and I'm just like, I can't lose. After probably about like three minutes of just chewing and gagging, I finally just had to all over the place. And you didn't make 20 bucks. I didn't. He was like, you can have the 20 bucks. I was like, I don't want your fucking pity money. I was like, this is impossible. You want to know how I guessed wasabi? I have no idea. It's a weird story. Right before I came here, I was sitting on the couch with my kids, and Cars 2 came on, which I've never seen. Mm -hmm. I still haven't. Okay. And there's a scene where they're overseas, and... Toe Mater's over there, Tomater. and they're at this lavish party, and the guy behind the sushi bar has a big old thing wasabi, and Toe Mater's like, oh, that's pistachio ice cream. Give me some of that. <laughs> oh, and no. the guy's like, no, no, no. And he gives him a little scoop. He's like, more, more, more. Toe Mater eats all the wasabi, runs around, sticks his head in her fountain. So wasabi was on my brain when you told that story. <laughs> that's funny how that yeah. works, man. What are the chances? Dude, I was just looking at this just to see what wasabi is and what comes up like in oh, it's I don't even know what it is. It's, it's fake in the states. Well, no, there's there's a real wasabi plant, but it says it's really hard to grow and difficult to to um, it's a horse it, it doesn't right? face that it doesn't last that long as far as the the true plant, but it says a blend 95% of restaurants use a blend of horseradish, mustard flour, cornstarch and green food coloring. So you're really just slamming down horseradish. Interesting. It's a, yeah, apparently, if you go to a really, really high end sushi yeah. place, but horseradish is like thick and chunky, and wasabi is like pretty smoothed out. That mustard powder they grind it yeah. down. Yeah, cornstarch. Yeah, they're. But so you'll find places that are like, no, we only use real wasabi, and you always have to be a little incredulous to it. But, like, but the funny thing is, is that most pe that says most people who think they've had wasabi actually never tasted the stuff. Yeah, that's what's <laughs> that's what's so crazy. Like, have I ever had real wasabi? Yeah. Who knows? I'd yeah. like to think that day I did. Yeah. <laughs> that day I had a golf ball of real wasabi. It's a $500 golf ball. This dude did have more money than anybody ever should, especially at the age we were at. I uh -huh. was just like, this dude. He, I, I'm, I'm still not certain that he had a good job, but he didn't have that good of a job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this dude was like. A little shady maybe. Oh, he was a lot shady. <laughs> he was a lot of fun too. S secondary income. I, I think there was a secondary income, and I think he was at the top of whatever food chain involved that secondary income because he had a good job, right. but it wasn't like no one should live as well yeah. as this guy does. So I, I'm willing to say I ate real wasabi that day. <laughs> That's what nice. I, and spit it all back up all over his in his sink because I'm a classy man. Speaking of spitting things up, we were talking about mayonnaise. I got to know how the Duke's doing. Yes. I haven't talked to him in a little bit. I don't have any updates here. We are what? We, this is uh, two full weeks. Is it two full weeks? Two now? full weeks. We'll have to we'll have to confirm. Because we're recording on no, we're recording on the sixteenth. He called on the second. Yep. And then, so that was his first call, and last week was the ninth. That was his second call in after his first full week. Now we're getting so into this would be the end of week two check in. We're getting into the meat and potatoes here. This is where we thought there would be problems. It's where the rubber yeah. meets the road. For those that don't know, if you're just uh, a casual listener, haven't been around in a while. Fuck you. <laughs> no, who said that? Now they'll come back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. So the Duke the Duke has been helping us out with an experiment where he's eating uh, mayonnaise that has not been refrigerated. Counter now for, mayonnaise. Now for two weeks. It's been counter mayonnaise. And we're keeping track of W's and L's, which is uh, wins and losses to most people. But in this instance, it's, it's a... Whole logs and and uh, loose whole stools and loose stools. There it is. So let's get a check in with the Duke. I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna give this guy a call. Let me just look up the Duke. The there, Duke. There we go. What's the over under on him doing the jars of mayonnaise? Oh, I'm not. I'm not even touching that. <laughs> let's get through. Let's get through a couple weeks. This is next challenge. Let's see if the Duke's even with us. This is the Duke. The Duke. The Duke. Perfect. I was, I was hope we were just wondering if you were still alive. He's so. alive. <laughs> He's in the ICU. <laughs> I am doing well, fellas. I'm he, doing well. He's in the hospital. He's like, honey, grab the mayonnaise when you come up to visit. I got to keep going. <laughs> yeah. This can't be mayonnaise related. <laughs> it's got to be something else. So have you got two weeks under your belt right now, the Duke? 
Yeah, we're at 14 days, and I went 9-0 and last week. 9-0. and oh, Nine W's, zero losses? They said it Correct. couldn't be done. They said it couldn't be done. Something's uh, we're doing. We're doing well. A perfect the mayonnaise week. is a little. It's a little tangy, but still <laughs> tastes pretty good. It is. So the flavor is changing now. There's a slight change. I ran out of turkey on Friday, so I did a tablespoon of <sighs> mayonnaise. The you know the two week old mayonnaise, and I said, well, let's let's see what the cold mayonnaise. And I noticed a slight tang to the. Uh, Hold on. Mayonnaise. You, you had your counter mayonnaise, and then you went in for a, a tablespoon control. of good mayonnaise, like like refrigerated mayonnaise? Yeah, because this is in the name of science, guys. <laughs> I, I've got to know what I'm dealing with. Now here, Duke, I have a question for you. Last week, we we talked a little bit about some mild separation going on there. Did you try shaking it up? Has the separation gotten any worse? Any Any changes? Nope, I haven't I? All I do is I open it up and squeeze it to whatever I'm eating, whether it's on a tablespoon, a piece of bread, a piece of meat. Nothing. I haven't shaken it or done anything to that 18 ounce bottle. Good on you. Good on you. Mm. He's he's actually on pace with what they say because there's a slight, slight vinegar taste. They say when it starts to get a little towards the bad side. Okay, so this could be our first indication that it's turning. Is yes, this, just the, the vinegary the, taste? I, because Tangy is describing a little bit of the vinegar that could, can get get there. And I love vinegar, so this is great. <laughs> 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 the Duke is unfazed, no matter what the universe is throwing at him through this. this That's right. This science experiment on his counter. I mean, one guy said ten get ten days. Brendan said fourteen. I'll be at fifteen tomorrow. Yeah. I'm winning. This was yes. this was officially Mike Jackson from M4K. He had ten days as the uh, the moment of truth. I had fourteen days. So everything you're doing past this, it's officially gravy as far as my calculations. Well, and Big Mayo had eight hours, and you're dead. <laughs> so you've already <laughs> shown right. Big Mayo what's up. That's right. The Sours Company and Hellman's are yeah. <laughs> shaking in their boots. Like we're gonna have to get together and shut down this inside the Pallet House podcast. Yep. They're bringing out all our secrets. Keep this recording, guys. They might they might wipe it <laughs> off the web. Yeah, if we disappear, <laughs> you know yeah. it was Big Mayo. Yep. Don't let them. Big Mayo. Don't let them fool you. It was the Hellman's crew. That's right. No, not the Hellman's crew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the FDA comes in and says, "Where's the Duke? <laughs> we need to find so this Duke, guy." So Duke, you went you went nine and zero. You had. A very solid week, if you don't mind me saying. So, oh yeah. Let yep, me let I me sure guess. Did. Were there no no fun Saturday nights this this weekend, or what? What, what kept you from? Uh, I would say it was just a little. It was just a little toned down, Troy. It was still uh, okay. Still quite a few quite a few cocktails and some heavy eating, but I tend to have some late night eating that goes on sometimes. And, and this particular Saturday night. It was before the midnight hour. It's when I when I creep after midnight is when the, there tends to be an L the following yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. yes. That checks out. That all that does add up. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to uh, we'll have to get together this weekend. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll help you score an L. We'll get you back in that L category soon enough. <laughs> That's right. I feel like I'm not doing my part here. No. Damn, but the Duke is doing his Duke. The Duke, did you happen to see uh, this this world record breaking uh, woman who ate the three like gigantor jugs of mayonnaise? I saw that, but I, I think I could do two week old faster and still did, be doing well. Did you hear the disgust in his voice? Yes, he said. Yeah. He said, "I saw that." Yeah, like, nothing. I don't have time for this. Well, trash. I mean, he he has every right. Look, she's eating. Fresh out of the fridge, mayonnaise. She's not challenging herself. She's not. In fact, would we be willing to say that the Duke is on a world record run for most time eating unrefrigerated mayonnaise? Uh, show me where he's not. I would. I'd like to know what the world <laughs> yeah. record is. We really should have had the Guinness eating. We should have got first. Guinness involved. I think we have enough documentation to where they could say eating the oldest mayonnaise. <laughs> I like. 
Is Steve looking this up? This is tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually not looking you up. I'm I literally just, just that. in my head was picturing the Duke hanging the Guinness World Record in his house and his wife just shaking her head in pure <laughs> disgust. Like Next to a bar like, from Mayonnaise from the 60s. <laughs> he's like, honey, I told you I'd be something. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I did it. I <laughs> ate the oldest mayonnaise ever. <laughs> and only one L. It lasted two weeks, but it was one L. <laughs> Look at one, my- <laughs> one continuous L. <laughs> For two weeks. And now I'm back. A world record holder. I got the plaque. <laughs> Man, that's too oh, funny. How's the wife? Gosh. How's the wife and kids holding up? Oh, they're doing well. I I told the wife today she could be more supportive in her her <laughs> comment was. <laughs> <laughs> Her comment was, I haven't thrown the mayonnaise out. Fair enough. That is so true, though. I love that the Duke turned to the wife. He's like, honey, you could be more supportive in my my adventure here. So, Duke, is there a chance that you'll come downstairs one morning and the jar's just gone? Do you think she'll no, pull the trigger? No, no chance. No. She said her support is the fact that she hasn't thrown it away. <laughs> and, and I told her it hasn't affected her. Why, why does it matter? She's witnessing greatness. She understands. Yeah, no shit. You know, there's probably some truth to that. Like the first two weeks that your husband's running across the country, you may not be supportive, but after two weeks, you're like, man, yeah, this look guy's going go. for it. I like it. You're like the Forrest Gump of mayonnaise eating. <laughs> Who's coming with me? <laughs> well, I, I got to be honest, uh, the Duke. I'm uh, I'm a little I'm a little impressed here. You've gone two weeks with no ill effects. I'm starting to think that uh, that big mayonnaise really does is bullshitting us a little bit, or maybe the FDA is just a little uh, little wussified. But I, you are you are proving your your metal here, man. This is impressive. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel good. We'll see as we get down towards day twenty one. Maybe things change. Maybe they don't. That's but I'm was, still I'm still going. That's what I'm thinking, Duke. Is I think this is the I think third week is the critical week. I think by the end of the third week, there will be either you'll be able to continue just based on where you're kind of sitting now, or there might be critical mass. Reached. I think I think I think the big curveball is going to be Thanksgiving Day, which will be three and a half weeks into it, when he is gorging himself oh, no. on all that food, <laughs> and then he well, has to throw in a little counter mayonnaise on uh, top of all that food. The next day, leftover turkey. Yeah, I would recommend eating your mayonnaise early in the day. Do not save that for <laughs> yeah. the big for the big show. Yeah. Well, he, here's the thing, guys. We're an 18 ounce bottle. I'm a little bit. I'm probably halfway through. So you figure two more two weeks. tables. Two tablespoons is one ounce. I'm probably averaging point seven five, so a little over a tablespoon. Uh-oh. Look at the numbers on the Duke. This yeah. dude is so, Mr. Science. Pro. I, I feel like Thanksgiving Day, that bottle might be ending the run. That, that could be, be it, the huh? cut off. Yeah, oh, keep, I wish keep a motherfucker would. Please make, <laughs> yes. please make your final serving right there in front of family and friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you when you have the family over, under twenty five people, of course, when you yes. have your family over and they ask you to step up and say grace in front of everyone after you're done. You hold up that last squirt of counter mayo, and you explain to them that you are the Duke, and you've been working towards this, and, and you're happy that they're here to share in all that is you. I'm thankful that you all get to see the greatness that is the Duke. I'm thankful that Dukes made this mayonnaise, and I'm thankful for all the W's. Today, exactly. I consider myself... The luckiest man <laughs> alive. <laughs> that sounds that sounds about accurate, though. I think I think Thanksgiving Day could be the day. Big Mayo mm. and Big Fridge have fooled you your whole lives. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, hey, hey, Duke. I'm glad you're keeping the exact numbers of the you know point seven five because uh, when you do end up in the hospital and they ask you what you ate, just say I had one tablespoon of mayonnaise don't let them know you've been doing it for a full month <laughs> so just so you know duke since you've been eating this mayonnaise you're 17 and 2 that is impressive yeah the week before you ate the mayonnaise you were 11 and 2 
So in the uh, two yeah. weeks, you're 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 becoming you you are more efficient. Yeah. Yeah. And you're having less uh, less issues. Yeah. This is incredible. He's greased up. Less po- less toilet paper being used for all these crazy sons of bitches out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, this is yeah. it. The dude didn't have to hoard it away. Toilet paper shortage? Yep. We've got the answer for you. Warm mayonnaise. <laughs> counter mayo. Exactly. Dude's going to have his own, brand, his own brand of counter mayo. I'd buy it. Yeah. I'd buy it. A little tangier than I like. Yeah. But, <laughs> but good. Good. <laughs> Saves you that valuable fridge space. Yeah. By week three, it's going to be fucking Miracle Whip. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, hey Duke, thank you so much for for jumping on the phone with us, man. I'm I'm impressed. Very, I, very. I cannot wait to hear week three. We're rooting for you, Duke. Godspeed. I appreciate it, fellas, and I look forward to reporting back next week. All right, man. We will talk to you soon. To talk to All right, you, guys. Bye. Later. Bye. Man, I love that guy, the Duke. I mean, what's not to like? He's still so amped uh, up yes. and in. He's all in. Oh, I meant to ask if he's like shaking the jar. Like, no, he said he's. I asked. Yeah, he said he's. He said he's shaking it. Okay, he said he's keeping it, keeping it low key. Yep. Mm, he says he's opening it, squeezing out what he wants, and closing it back up. So nobody knows who he is, but the Duke is also a growing. grower. Yeah, he's growing a heck of a mustache, and he is killing doing it exceptionally well right now. Are we going to expose the Duke at the end of this? Should I we? think I think just at the end, maybe his costume should just be like a jar of a mayonnaise jar around mayonnaise. his neck, like yeah. a flavor flave clock. That'd be awesome. And just just show who he is, or he can keep his uh, anonymity. You know, I I hate to uh, thrust the Duke into the spotlight like that. Well, I mean, it wouldn't take a Sherlock Holmes to figure out who <laughs> who was if they really <laughs> wanted to get into. Oh our... no, you're talking to, to three and four guys that haven't figured out who Boo Boo Mysterio is in four years. Yes, and <laughs> well, the the Duke's one in sixteen. You got a one in sixteen chance. What if he's boo boo? Oh, then we'd really be dumb. <laughs> that would really be bad. <laughs> well, you just oh well, no, you didn't give it away because yeah, boo boo could be the Duke, and because the Duke's on the team, and boo boo could be on the team. Just never know. We don't know who boo boo is. Well, right. I say boo boo could be on the team. There's a few guys I don't know on the team. A few guys really? who got twenty dollars donations today that I don't even know. There's really only the only person I know that's not Boo Boo is Brendan. Unless it's the most elaborate yeah. scheme I've ever pulled on you. Yeah. Hey guys, I got a package. Her, her, her. <laughs> no. And yeah, not. and that actually, when you say it like that, yeah, you could be delivering stuff yourself and tricking, yeah. tricking me all the way through. I can assure you, though, I'm not Boo Boo. Yeah, you're not putting <laughs> that kind of effort into it. No, I put enough. Yeah, it's I'm. Blown away at that guy, but I tell you, I'm 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 really excited about how this mustache thing is going. Last week, I was down in the dumps. Yeah, my mustache looked like absolute crap. It's it's coming in way lighter than it should. Yeah, I'm very disappointed in the coloration of my mustache, but I'm enjoying that I'm doing something ever so slight that I'm calling the half Hogan. Okay, it's not. I'm not going down. Right, I'm just have. I'm I'm to the corners, which is in the bylaws of M4K. You want to yeah. go to the corners. Now, all I am doing is putting an ever so slight extension, ever yeah. so slight. It's the half Hogan. Yeah. And it's looking good. It doesn't look great. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look great. And I keep trying. It doesn't to- look bad. The whole problem is your mustache is so light. Yeah. If you're standing more than 10 feet away from you, you don't even see it. You just yeah. look good looking dude. You guys have great mustaches. Yeah. And they look awesome. Stu's is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> well, Stu has black hair. So, I mean, and, Stu but it, is. But Stu's 65 years old. True. And yet it comes in perfectly. Yeah, he isn't He isn't grayed up. I got more uh, gray than Stu, and he's 10 years older than me. And I'm, I'm 25, and it's yeah. all gray. <laughs> <laughs> stress free, Stress free living. I wish, but yeah. Yeah, that doesn't add up. You're always no, stressed. That doesn't add up. <laughs> but your hair is lighter anyway. Like, take the gray out. Like, It was, but my beard was always red. That's what's yeah. so frustrating. I always had blonde hair, which is now slowly getting darker, and yet my red beard is now fully gray. Yeah. It's I frustrating. Do, I do have, like, this Jay Leno gray patch, though. If I let my entire beard go out... In the last, uh, I don't know, year and a half, I've noticed right here on the corner of my chin, I'll get this like 
just gray one patch. spot. And what's yeah, it's just one little spot. And what's so funny That's is tough. My brother has the exact same thing, but it's like in his hair. When he lets his hair grow, he's got the Jalen gray spot. He's got the spot. There he's got go. brown hair with the little gray spot. It's it's funny. So the team is doing well. Yeah, you helped the team out big time today. You donated three hundred and sixty bucks, was it? Yeah, all in twenty dollar increments. Yeah, you gave everybody on the team a twenty dollar well hookup. It's a it's a brilliant move because if it works out. Be, well, the first thing is there was a match going on. So if I got them all in in time, then all of my twenty dollars became forty dollars, yeah. which is that's helpful. That yes. really helps some people. But also, it forced all the zeros to get money. Yes. And two weeks in, when you've got a zero on the board, and all of a sudden you get that email, boom, you've got a donation. Yeah. That's like a kick in the gut. Yeah. <laughs> because you're like, oh man, what? Yeah. Why'd someone? Do- I haven't sent out any. E- I'm gonna send out an email. It, it motivates you. Good play, Brendan. Good play. It motivated me. I spent. Did it? Did it work? I was, I was, yeah. I got off. I got off my. Uh, I got off my uh, staff meeting this morning, and about eleven o'clock to twelve thirty, I just went balls to the wall with sending it out, and it paid off. Nice. And I didn't even get half of where I needed to be, but I mean, that's so it the works. trick, man. Yeah, yep. you put out. You put twenty in everybody's coffers. There were about five dudes sitting on zero, and now they have to see themselves on the leaderboard as at the 20s. bottom. Yeah, yep. <laughs> right there at the <laughs> bottom, and it's like, that's right. That's yeah, right. Until you get a donation, you're not even on the leaderboard. Yeah, because you don't you don't exist. And then right. it's like, yeah. oh no, I better do something. Yep. And then it also makes you think, all right, somebody donated to me. Like I need to kind of get this in gear. Yeah, that was that was the logic. It was more about just kind of jump starting. Yeah, everybody, and hopefully it works because it's a and it's a big outlay of cash. I mean, before yeah. I started growing. Was good for 50 bucks some some years i could go as high as 100 bucks yeah, yeah. now i've started growing and it's costing me yep. far more yeah. money <laughs> yeah i got a donation from you and from james today so now i know i'm on the hook to donate both back to you guys because i can't just let your donation slide yeah, i hit the abacus yeah. up and i was like it's a match day which means that for every dollar i give you get one i.e one equals two, two equals four, et cetera. Yeah. But you're good at math. <laughs> <laughs> See how this goes. <laughs> so I was like, yes, all right. I got a little dig into the So abacus. you'll get like maybe $572.64 with his math. <laughs> like, yeah. There's no rhyme or reason to it. He's like, oh, wow, that's cool. For every $20, I get two more dollars. Carry the go. one. <laughs> wrong. You moved it the wrong way there, buddy. Hey, man, I mean, halfway through this almost, and there's 14 teams, and we're coming in fourth strong. Not, uh, I mean, it's close between two, three, and four as far as team raising. Oh, I, I don't think our team's going to really get up there. I just don't. There, Those other teams have some heavy hitters. They've been in the game a long time. Yeah, and look, we get better every year. Yes, and so that's, what we, that's all we can do. We're figuring it out. I did, I did catch a ration of shit today, though, from Jay and the Abacus. They hit me up early in the day saying – we're coming for you. Sleep with one eye open. They showed yeah. me where they were on the charts. They've jumped. And then the Balzer hit, team has jumped. They hit me up while I was eating dinner, and I looked down and read the email, and I was like, "Oh, my. they're ahead of me now, both of them." Oh, you're talking Indiv- about personal, in, yeah, individually. Like they, they called uh-huh. me out. They called me out individually. But I thought this because they called us out. The Balzer team called us out on the. Uh, on the meetup a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll come at us. Yeah. But they're not going to catch our team. Their team is weak. I don't know. Their team is weak. We're cur- look, have you looked at their team? We're double. Dude, we're they've, cur- got, they've got some good players on their team. Mm. We're currently double. I, what happen, they have. Like, I know for a fact they, they are, they're steady Eddie, and they always hit hard right at the end. So it's very possible they beat us. But I am trying to talk smack because I, I care about my team more than I care about me. Like I, I think I have a hard time beating them. Our team will win. I'm confident in that. Oh yeah, I think I have I have more faith in our team than I do in in myself beating them. But they called me out individually, and both of them are ahead of me right now, which is it's just frustrating to see. Hmm. They're 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 taking me to the hole. But that's what I I love the competition around raising money for kids. Even this week, we were over here, like during football. I put all the games with spreads, and I like wrote all the teams that I liked. And I was like, if anybody feels differently about these games, let me know. Any other grower, and mm. we can donate to each other's mustaches. So like, yeah, gambling for good. 
Yeah. The old GG. But it, it gets it gets my juices going. I ended up I ended up having to pay out twenty bucks last night for uh Terrence O'Neill's. Okay. Penny Lane Pub. I had to, had to pay him twenty bucks because the Seahawks just can't hold up their end of the bargain. <laughs> <laughs> but then I woke up this morning to money in my account because the Patriots did hold up their end of the bargain. I like that. I'd like to start stuff. I'd like to start throwing around some uh Philanthropic yeah. bets. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> idea. Some charity bets, you know. As I'm looking at the uh, page, we just while we're right here recording, it just went up another fifty bucks because I just boom, I got I got donated another fifty dollars. Nice, that easy, guys. It just point click and be done. Where Where are you at right now, Stu? Oh, where am I at? The, yeah, the team. You want the team number first? No, your number. My turn. My current number is. What I like about this, I want to hear his number. It is at. 585. And where were you when you woke up this morning? My registration fee of $20. <laughs> no, that doesn't go to your <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. he, was, You're at zero. he was at a zero. zero. I gave a $20 push. Yep. But, yeah. <laughs> and $560 have come directly after. I motivated him. <laughs> it works. It's amazing what twenty dollars will amazing do. Amazing what a, a guilty conscience <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> can do for your motivation. It's amazing what twenty dollars will do in a man. Crazy. I recommend to all the growers that listen: <laughs> if you can find a grower who doesn't have anything in there, throw them twenty yep. bucks. You will be shocked at how quickly they're like, "What? What? I? Well, I'll be damned if I'm going to let that be the only one I yep. get." Yeah. <laughs> I love it. See, that's a big swing. I feel better. About the money I put out there today. But you know what? I never felt bad about dropping all that money this morning because it all goes to good charities. And that's what I keep. I, I keep preaching. We've been preaching this for years. It is it is probably one of the best ways to donate to charity because you know that 100 percent every dollar is going oh, yeah. directly to the charity. I mean, it's you can't you can't you can't ask for more out of a out of a charitable organization. And you're supporting people. Who are growing mustaches, which is hilarious in its own right. And you're supporting kids who, you know, we've talked about how shitty of a year 2020 has been. But, like, we're still able to do this thing and still live our lives. Like, these kids aren't getting to do a lot of the things. First off, a lot of these kids are in hospitals and stuff, so they couldn't do much anyway. And now they're, because of the whole COVID thing, they can't get to do a lot of the other stuff that we would do for them. So or the people, money or people can't even come see them. It, well, yeah, exactly. They can't. They're we're finding different ways to help out. You know, to, yeah. to have people come visit and, and do parties and stuff like that. COVID didn't show up, and cancer said, "Okay, we'll take the year off." Yeah, that's not how that works. And so, unfortunately, yeah, we're all dealing with this, but they're still dealing with. It. And think about the organizations like Feed More, where we're actually donating. Yep. We're helping. We're helping kids who, who maybe don't have a really solid home life and can't get food. You know, their parents don't have money to put food in the table or put food in their backpack. And now some of those kids aren't even able to go to school. And they're doing like virtual schooling where their lunches were. Yep. A company like Feedmore, an organization like that, needs more help now than it ever has. And many of those parents who are already struggling yeah. are struggling worse. Yep. I had because very... they're working the kind of jobs that you can't work from home. Yeah, I saw um, one of the food pantries at Food feed more put on the other day how was it awesome eye sobering like i was actually there only because i was going to see a soccer game and it was at the same school where they were holding the event yeah and it was i mean i've never seen so many cars the parking lot was full i mean it was and these are all people that were waiting there as three four hours just to get some food and our money going to feed more is just tremendous yes. It, that, that stuff is needed. I see that at soccer games all the time. Yeah. Or like there's a line over I here of people picking up lunches. And that like, was my first. I I mean, it was eye sober. I hadn't seen that it's, before. It's it's very real. You you dropped a term I've never heard. Eye sobering. Yeah. Not familiar with that term. It's, well. I get, I, I mean, I, I'm piecing it together. You've had I those just, nights and then all of a sudden you see something and you're like, I'm not drunk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that actually adds up. Okay. Sure. And so. Troy, you had a cool uh you actually had a cool experience today that I was I was kind of excited about. You got a donation today, right? I did. So I was actually coming over here and I was stopping to get the deli because you didn't have a chance to get it. So I was stopping in the local Publix, which is my new favorite place. It's so clean. <laughs> it's so <laughs> clean. <laughs> Brand so new. So I'm walking in, I got my mustache, my new mustache for kids hat on, and I got the new mustache for kids. 
face mask that has the big curly mustache logo on it. Yeah. And I'm walking through the parking lot, and it's dark. It's 7 o'clock. And this lady was getting in her car. She goes, I love your mustache. She yelled it across. The, I was about 30 feet from her. She was like, I love your uh, your mask. And I said, oh, thank you so much. I, I was. She goes, do you have a mustache under there? And I pulled my mask out and I said, and I started walking to her. I said, it's funny you should ask. I actually grow a mustache every year for uh, Mustache for Kids. It's this group of guys that we raise money. We raised $368,000 last year and get, went through the whole spiel. And she just Your was elevator like, pitch game was perfect. Oh yeah, I love that. <laughs> she was she was loving it. She was like, "That's so amazing." She told me she had a family member had that has special needs and has been to a children's hospital and done all these things. And she was like, "I want to donate." So I get, yeah, I gave her the I gave her the website. I said, "Just you know, go donate. I don't care to whom." And uh, I did I did she so she I I thought she was gonna look it up, but like later she was like, "What's the website?" So I told her thing and she was probably gonna blow me off but she didn't she pulled it up right there on her phone and i, I said well if you're pulling it up go to the inside the pout house page you donate to one of those guys yeah those people are good yeah so i so <laughs> i was walking away and i was almost in the building she yelled back what's your name i was like well you don't have to donate to me just donate to anybody and she was like i want to donate to you so i walked back and gave her my name by the way alphabetical Call bullshit on that. I'm the last guy on the second page. They yeah. do it by first name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a little, Total the BS. Abacus was in charge of the alphabetical yeah, yeah. order. <laughs> so I walk in. She's like, I'm going to donate right now. I'm like, cool, thanks. I walk in. I'm getting the beer. Phone pings. I got the email. So I got a $50 donation from a random lady. From in wearing a, public a mask parking. with a mustache yes. on it. <laughs> And I looked her up on Facebook, and I couldn't find her, which doesn't surprise me. But her name was Donna Towns, and this was at the Publix Respect. at, at Huguenot and Robius. So if anyone in this area listens and knows of Donna Towns, She's all please right. send my love because I can't thank her enough. That was amazing. She did not have to do that. Doesn't know me from anybody. Like the cause, like the idea, made a donation. Good stuff. Good love stuff. that. See, man. So, look, the masks work. The mustache totally. masks work. And for those that need to donate or want to donate, like that, yeah. that experience that Troy just said, it takes less than two minutes yeah, of your time. Yeah, it's pretty simple. You just go to m4krichmond.org, boom, donate, and just know that your money's going to a lot of really good causes. Search up inside the pallet house. Of course. I mean, <laughs> the truth is you can donate right. wherever you want. The, the, the under... You know, that secondary truth is the inside the pallet house guys little, would love the money. A little yeah. competitiveness, that's all it is. It's for are, fun. We are competing against a couple of the other teams out there. I, yes. I don't think we're going to win, but there's one team in particular that I'm looking at. Balzer. Yes. I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'm coming <laughs> for you. No, I love it. Hey, man, I'm thirsty. Me too. That's why I just opened this uh, Coors Light. Could, I, could, we, could we do a deli? Do you want to? Sure. All right. Let's talk about it. Yeah, talk about it, Stu. I'm excited here because this is a beer that I didn't even know existed and, and apparently has been out for quite a while. But a lot of people are familiar with Cigar Brewing Company. Right. And they've got the High Lie, which is a pretty well known. I mean, that's a that's a that's yeah. a big dog beer. Everyone a lot of people love that beer. It's a big seller. You find it just about anywhere, but this is the high low, which I guess is their low cal version of the high lie, which I've never had. So I'm 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 pretty excited to uh, you had the high lie <clears throat> yeah and i like the high lie quite a bit have you ever played that sport high lie is the fastest sport i know that Ooh, these aren't yeah. super cold they were in the fridge pretty cold a little cold let's see how oh, this goes good. i think it's so on the box oh, i didn't pull the box out but on the box there's a sticker that says on the box that says you'll notice that there's a because of the can shortage these are regular cans that have been wrapped so these cans aren't printed on oh so that they, might be less cold yeah because it's got are be you saying cold. these are recycled cans no no oh. but it might have a layer of insulation so in my hand it doesn't feel gotcha, as cold gotcha, gotcha. they're bland they're just standard cans with the wrap on it does yours say low down and dirty on the bottom yeah sure <laughs> Stu just turned his over i got you bitch yeah mine does say low down and dirty <laughs> florida man strikes again this is an interesting beer. So man. this is tropical and bright with a full palette of flavor and potency designed with moderation in mind. High low IPA delivers the highs where it counts and the lows where you'd want them. 
So it still has 11 grams of carb, which I'm, uh, carbs, which I'm going to hold against it a little bit. And it's four percent, so that's where the low is. Huh? Yeah, and it's it's lower, like 120 calories. So not 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 horrible. No. Huh? That's an interesting beer right there. That actually retains a good bit of the high lie characteristics. That's interesting. Speaking of highlight, there's a great 30 for 30 on it I saw years ago about the sport of highlight. It's the fastest sport in the world. And how it blew up like back in the 70s and 80s. and like In Florida during yeah. the cocaine binge. Yep. Yeah. Everyone was like, I can finally track the ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, well, my first introduction to highlight is the intro to Miami Vice. Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> yeah. see the guys yeah. throwing the ball. That's absolutely I think that right. ball travels upwards of 180 miles an hour. <laughs> like, it's crazy fast. Yeah, well, the ball has to do a lot of cocaine before every game. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's really hard on the ball. Very short life expectancy, high levels of strokes and heart attacks, but but it's a fast ball. Yeah, the 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 high lie, the Cigar City Brewing high lie is, I mean, everyone loves that beer. It's a pretty, pretty well-respected yeah. beer, to say the least. But the high low is a little different. This beer is... Spears, well, I'm guessing I'm guessing Stu's not going to like it. I don't know that for sure because you've been drinking more IPAs lately. Yeah. But I'm guessing this one's going to rub you the wrong way. It's just my gut reaction as I as I try this beer. When I first sip it and it's going down, it's I, I kind of like it. But it's still that it's got that back end that's coating the roof of my mouth that I'm just not 100% of it. But oh, I get it's it. got a little bit of orange zest, some leafy mint. I mean, it's got some nectarine flavors in there. It does. I, are you reading that <laughs> off of that? <laughs> I was like, yeah, damn. I was like, this is Stu's best review yet. That, you that's son two of a on bitch. the nose, Stu. <laughs> I was like, God, it, it really does. Got a little snappy bitterness. <laughs> yeah. Oh. If you had just kept, I know, it was you too, went I went one over, too many. You went one too many. Yeah. I was like, I was like, wow. I mean, it yeah, really one or does. two would have been good. You went three, like that's <laughs> one adverb. Too like, many. There yeah. is there is a subtle midge <laughs> there, and there's, it's definitely more of an orange zest than it. God, Stu, that's it's highly a, it's, accurate. He's learning. <laughs> yeah, I was oh, impressed. I, mean, I got to read to learn, but yeah, it's, and then <laughs> I just saw the warm glow coming off his computer screen yep. on his face. I was like, wait a minute. This says that it's nectarine, orange zo- zest, lime leaf, a melding of peaches, breading of malt, um, and a little bit of a it says snappy bitterness with a crust-like malt, sparkling co- carbonation combination. Full moderate-bodied IPA, but for me, it's going to be a two and a half. Yeah, just, I just I mean I like the refreshing up front, but it just lingers too bad for me. The lingers legit. With this beer, it's in the back of my mouth for sure. Troy, what are you thinking of that? So I disagree with you two completely. This, to me, upon initial sip, every sip, it's full-bodied IPA. It's it's the skunk. It's all of it. To yeah. me, it finishes clean. It finishes way well, clean in respects to IPAs. Yeah. So I yeah. don't mind this. You may give it a grade. Yeah, yeah, always. First time? <laughs> <sighs> well, you started talking, and then you threw it over to me. Um, this is good. I give it a three. I like this beer. I missed the mark, though. I could drink. I could drink more than one of these. Yeah, I think. Oh, you could. You could put these down. I'm. I'm going to. I'm gonna ding it for the eleven grams of carbs. Yeah, and for a hundred and twenty calories, like. Your light beer should be around that 100-calorie mark. Yep, and half the carbs. You should get those carbs down. So they've taken a shortcut. What's a Coors Light or whatever that's like six or something? That's a heavy one by light beer yeah. standards, and it's like five. Yeah. And then and then Miller Light's down to like three or something. Well, you know what the big knock on this is? If you want to get down to it, I bought a 12-pack. It was like after it was like sixteen ninety nine. So after tax, title, tax, and processing fee, was like $18 and change. <laughs> and the COVID cleaning expense <laughs> yeah. for, the, for the Publix. So if I'm going to put it into the, the, the light IPA category, then I'm going to have to knock it, and I'm going to put it down at like uh, two and a half, and that's literally that knock is coming from its, its yeah. stats. But if I'm just going to take it as an IPA, 
I like the fruitiness of it. I like the, the yeah. orange zest. I like because that's that kind of that's what I like in a yep. hoppy beer. I like it to be kind of fruity and citrusy. It's got that going for it for sure. It doesn't leave that funk mouth for me. It's not maybe my flora and fauna and operating them like that, but it doesn't. I don't feel that gross funk all through my mouth. I think it's there. It's just not as heavy. It's not as heavy, but because of the carbs, it's holding on a little. It's not bad. It's certainly not bad. It's not. You know, it's not like one of your hardcore IPAs that's going to linger in your mouth. It's, it doesn't have any of that. It what lingers is orange. Yeah, which is kind of cool. So hence the color of the can. No, nobody knows what color the can is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we'd bring it up. Seems irrelevant. But but you know, take it out of the low carb range. I think it's still a really good and refreshing IPA. So I like that a lot. Um, but that being said, it also doesn't have as much as a hardcore IPA. So it's a three. It's it's better than bad yeah. for sure. I like this beer. I would drink it again. I'd seek it out of a cooler. I don't think I'd seek it out of the fridge at the store. Yeah, exactly. That's like kind of where I stand. So you gave it a three? A three. So for, a three, three, two and a half. I like the marketing. I didn't talk to it. It's too late now. Yeah. It's too late. It is a I great name. The, the high low is great. Yeah. 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 I mean if you're if it's the knockoff of your high lie, which again, back to the price point and the carbs and yeah, the it's alcohol got a content. Things going like it's just it. not those numbers don't check out like if I'm drinking a four percent beer, I'm okay with a Miller or Coors Light. Like, mm-hmm. if I, I don't know. Like, if I'm gonna drink a a beer with that many carbs, I'd go with a Guinness or something. Like, it's just better. Yeah, better flavor, more alcohol. Like, I don't one hundred percent doesn't check out. It's matching the price with the gain. Yeah, of high. Now, now, yeah, now, <laughs> you, you you called out Guinness. Guinness has actually oh, yeah. come out with a non-alcoholic beer. And I expected Guinness to come out with, like, a Guinness Blonde or something as their non-alcoholic beer. Dude, they came out with a big, creamy, thick head, dark Guinness with no alcohol. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm very confused by it. But I love the fact that they went full stout, pours like a stout. It looks creamy like a Guinness. I'm like, actually, that could be awesome. Like, But pointless. Oh well, yeah. no. Guinness gives you strength. <laughs> well, it's going to be. It's it's not available till twenty twenty one. Oh, I wouldn't release anything in twenty twenty. Yeah, you don't want to have anniversary shirts that say since twenty twenty. You don't want that twenty twenty stank on you. No, you do not. No, you're like twenty twenty. Why do I know that? Why anymore? do I hate that number? Oh, that's right, because twenty twenty <laughs> was the fucking worst. Does hindsight twenty twenty now lose all credibility? Like hindsight's no, twenty twenty. Nah, because in hindsight, I would have skipped 2020. I think I can still, <laughs> I think I can still run with it in one way or another. But yeah, it's very interesting that Guinness came out with a non-alcoholic beer. I'm I'm interested to see how this. I thing don't like, I don't like Guinness, who's been making beer for hundreds of years, to fall into that trap. Like, you make beer. If if people want non-alcoholic beer, they can go find it somewhere else. Don't succumb to that. Pressure. You know what's a good non-alcoholic beer? Iced tea. Yeah, sweet. I just ice. love iced yeah. tea. Iced tea is a great non-alcoholic drink. <laughs> I, I'm I'm big on water. Ooh, ooh, yeah. nice. Uh, so throw some good. Ice in it. So yeah. good. Oh, people are not doing enough of this. Exactly. So good. Yeah, yeah but it would be interesting because do you think part of why they're not releasing it to 2021 is because they don't have the widgets? And if you're going to make a non-alcoholic Guinness and you have a widget shortage. You're already behind the curve because it's not alcoholic. Yeah. You right. desperately need it to be creamy. Yeah. So maybe you just push it off till when you think you'll have widgets back. You got to have that nitrogen in there. I think so. Yeah. I didn't know that Guinness just had a, uh, they just had a tragedy in the family. Oh, really? They have an, and they're like one of the Guinness heiresses. She ended up, they were having a party at the Guinness house. And I, 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 I hate when articles do this. Like the, the article I read called out that they had tubs of beer and booze in multiple corners of the house and out by the pool and all this stuff. So It's the Guinness family. Well, it was the July 31st barbecue attended by four families of the Guinness family. So it's like a family reunion of the Guinness clan. In Sussex. And so there was booze all over. They made this a very important point to bring up. Yeah, that was booze related. And this poor girl, she had been sitting in a hot tub with two other girls. 
She decided to get out of the hot tub, go the five feet, jump in the pool. Yeah. Her friends were facing, looking at the party, not looking her way. A few minutes later, the brother comes out and finds her at the bottom of the pool. What happened? They're not sure, but she had a broken collarbone. Yeah. Like, something bad happened. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, she either dove in or she slipped and hurt herself yeah. and then just fell in and drowned. They're, they're saying either jumping off of the platform or slipped and hit her head, but either way, she cracked her noggin. Guess how much alcohol they found in this poor 19-year-old system? Well, she's 19, so but she's a in ton. The, she's in the Guinness family. Yeah. No, maybe. I don't know. 0.0. 0. And yeah. yet they make it a point in the article to call out that the Guinness family has all this booze at yeah. the party and all this stuff. Okay, yeah, it's the Guinness family. And it's a barbecue. And the of-age people, yeah, they were cool. There's a beer around. and But this poor girl, they, they made that, they, the whole, they talked about it. They set her up like and then she it's was. Like, so, like, so if you just read the, the top bit. You know, like like people do. You're like, yeah, this poor yeah. girl got hit. This girl didn't they, even have a single drop. Just in like her. articles do, they give you the headline, not the full information. Yeah, then they give you some salacious crap. They failed to mention the entire curse, which is a whole other thing <laughs> of the of the Guinness family. I've never understood this whole like, oh, the luck of the Irish. Yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> we don't have luck, okay? Yeah, we had a, we we had potatoes. You do March seventeenth. You know, everyone everyone just jumps in and gets hammered so they can act like the stupid Irish. It, that's that's even offensive. Yeah. It's a whole other. But like, you say, did you just cancel St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> no, look, that's the best thing about about being Irish. You actually don't care that the stereotype's horrible. We're yeah. like, come on, everybody, join into the stereotype that's been holding us down for for <laughs> centuries. We don't care. Well, you don't really fight against it on the seventeenth of March. We don't fight against it yeah. 365 days a year. It's just a problem. It's just just how we are. I mean, Notre Dame really doesn't fight against it. Yeah, the fighting Irish. Offensive. <laughs> Cancel. <laughs> yeah. but, but no, we'll take it. It's a fighting leprechaun. <laughs> like, it's horrible. They, the, 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 old, the old quote is, uh, God invented whiskey to keep the Irish from taking over the world. Yep. <laughs> just hold them down. Yeah. Hold them down. But like the luck of the Irish thing is such... There's such crap, potato famines in 1847, all this craziness. And But the Guinness family is another one of these that is damn near cursed. I don't know, Stu, do you have any any details you can give me? And I don't want you to read the article. No, no, I'm not reading the article, but some, I mean, like, the... the Arthur original. Guinness was a hell of a hell of an entrepreneur. Yes, he fathered 21 children. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even, didn't even mention that side, but... <laughs> Yeah, the Irish fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but part of the curse was, unfortunately, he lost 10 of those kids prior to him even passing away. But that was in the 1800s, right? Yeah, that's right. kind of so par that's, for the that's course. Bad. Unfortunately, that is kind of par for the course. But he was also the I'm wealthiest a, I hope it wasn't with he, one he was. woman. He was. No, one Arthur one Guinness men. was a saint. He's one woman all the time. 21 There's kids there. by one woman? Well, unless one of one of the wives died in childbirth, and then you get another yeah, wife. Yeah, you get another one. <laughs> but but look, that's <laughs> the that's, that's the Roman Catholic thing. No no sperm will be will be yeah. wasted. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't spill your seed, man. No. The irony is, is that of those ten that children that were lost, most of them were alcoholics and died in poverty. <laughs> Which is, okay. <laughs> Lucky bastards. Hold on. How did they die in poverty? He was the wealthiest person yeah. in Ireland. Because well, <laughs> they probably just went out in the street and drank themselves to death, and yeah. he wanted no parts of them. Oh, the luck of the Irish. Yeah. Hey, don't give me this nonsense. But they've had they've had many a problem since then, too. Like yeah, they, I mean, they had somebody that was killed by a terror group in 1944. They had uh, a, a daughter that drove a car off, an Aston Martin off the French Riviera in 78. Another without a Kennedy behind the wheel, well, yeah. Chappaquiddick bomb. And it's funny they're putting all this, they're tying all these in together, which is the Guinness curse, the Rothschilds, the Gettys, and the Kennedys. That's what this. This is an article that's got them all tied in yeah. together. All Irish. <laughs> these are like you just basically put the Mount Rushmore of Ireland up there, and they all have just horrific curses. Like even the the top of the food chain. It's not lucky. So if you're saying you got to keep Ireland down, these people were too successful for the Irish, and therefore yeah, we just started the curse taking just yeah, the curse just started taking take them, them out. out. It's unbelievable, man. Yeah, look up the Guinness curse sometime. Get to know everyone's familiar with the Kennedy curse, but check out the Guinness curse. It's not a great scene either. I still think they're lucky. <laughs> There's, you know what it is. There are certain people who have luck, but there is always an underlying sense of like sadness. That's kind of. 
That's kind of what Irish. A trade, a trade off. They're yeah. a proud folk. Honestly, on some level, the Irish find a little bit of joy in sadness. It like it helps you know when you're happy, or sometimes when you get sad, you're like, "I had a good night last night. What'd you do? I just cried with my buddy about." The- <laughs> <laughs> you know, we but drank. Don't you think some of the uh, enjoyment in being the underdog? Yeah, I think you kind of embrace it, and then when you get your wins, you're like, "Yeah, good win." I don't know. Hmm. Well, I I don't know because I'm I don't have pride in any of that. I don't know my history well enough to claim anything, so I just get to sit back and watch everybody else wave their flags from their <laughs> great great grandfather who they knew nothing about. This Black Friday, I saw that like Ancestry dot com is having like a ridiculously cheap sale yeah. on their like entry level. You know, kit because Ancestry is one of the ones that they make money off of every time they can figure something out about you because they could tie you to all these other people. So I have one. I right. bought I, my wife or my mother in law. Somebody gave me a kit because I was really interested about it. You, yeah. you know, a year or two ago when we were talking about it because I really I don't know my history, so I don't know. And one of them got it me the kit, and then I've been paranoid take it because of all the other stuff that finally came out about like, oh, they're finding this out and this yeah. out and this out predisposition you know like like things yeah. like you can yeah you can say oh we're not going to insure you you you're gonna yeah. get cancer you're like what yeah yeah that's that's not a great a great scene so and, i'm sitting on it <laughs> like scared to pull the trigger i would like to do it anonymously though i think it would be the best podcast to come in here and not know our results and mix them up and have like yeah. a, have a third party go okay this person is this 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 and this which one is it and we have to like we have to figure out whose goes to who. Yeah. That would be fun. But you'd be devastated to know you weren't 100% Irish. I'm not 100% <laughs> Irish, but I'm devastated. Wait, what? Yeah, I, it depends on the month. <laughs> it's, it's, I am in March. Oh, it's, 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 <laughs> it's more Arizona than Chicago. <laughs> yeah, I claim Chicago all the time, but I probably have a little more Arizona in there. <laughs> That's probably right. Now, I know there's some other things in there, but like, could you imagine finding out that like you have zero Irish? Like, I have a buddy. Yeah. I have a buddy who's who's always been Irish, 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 Irish. Yeah, because of his last name, I guess he assumed. He found out he was he was all British. Goo. The oppressors of the yeah. Irish. Like, what's a twist? Yeah. You know, that would throw you for a loop. So how'd that go? Uh, he's, you know, he's coping. He's coping. <laughs> I don't talk to him anymore. Just, he's British. <laughs> <laughs> Just waving that Union Jack around. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how he's doing. He's dead to me. <laughs> we should test Terrence and see what his results are. <laughs> then blow his mind if he comes back. Well, you don't have to test. I mean, his parents are from. No, I know. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yeah, but, you know, they, they call uh, Liverpool the capital of Ireland over there because it's the, it's the, fir- it's the easiest port to uh-huh. get to from from ireland and so those people go back and forth and they just like mm-hmm. you know have sex yeah. like sailors so it's like th- that 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 city in ireland those bloodlines are mixed of course gotcha well i mean a lot of countries it'd be like trying to separate the european countries and the people who take pride of them it's like trying to separate the states here like good luck because you could be yeah. here and then someone comes in and there's a war and then the line moves yep and now you're that well are you? Because you're Prussian. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're not far. I mean, you're, the other country's, like, not far from your country, so it's not. But there's a big difference between where you come from and how you were raised culturally. Like, if you look at. That's the thing. I was raised to be Irish. I don't know what my bloodline is. Like, right. You know, who knows? I'd be Australian. Oh, no, that's just Irish. <laughs> Sent over there. <laughs> now, that I, now that I think about it. Those people were all just sent over there. I wouldn't raise me anything. That's good. Yeah. It's good. And boring. Yeah, but you just have pride in you and your family. Yeah. I mean, that's good. I like that. Lame. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, stupid me. I'm just proud to be American. What a loser. Oh. I can respect. Dude, dude, speaking of proud, I had a proud moment the other night. And then the more I started thinking about it, I was like, is it proud or is it just kind of like, the fact that I'm I'm quarantined essentially and I don't see a lot of people and I don't know what happened here, but you know we we all play the, this game and and every listener is probably familiar with with this game where you just kind of pass around a phone or a speaker and you go song for song yeah. throughout the night. Oh right, right right. You know you got the speaker going and it's like 
oh man, you played that song. Let me play this song. And then it naturally. We used to do that in here all the time. All the time. It's like my favorite yeah, thing in the and world. We haven't to done do. that in forever. Hijack the Bluetooth. <laughs> yeah, you just, you just, you just go. Oh, that song reminds me of this song. And then someone plays that and goes, oh my gosh, have you heard this? And then it's like you just keep going down the line, and sometimes you can do that for hours and hours on it. You could piss away six hours drinking oh, yeah. beer, listening to music like yeah. it's nothing. Well, the other night, my youngest daughter, like, my wife went to bed. My oldest daughter went to bed. My youngest daughter's like, well, Dad, I guess I'm just going to hang out with you. And I'm like. Was she bummed? No, she just. (laughs) She's looking for a good cry? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I'm sad, Dad. Let's hang out. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Let's put on a pot of tea. This is going to be a long night. I'm psyched. But so I was like, I was like, all right, well, come on out. I'm just sitting by the fire pit. And uh, I was like, I've got just this speaker on. And she's like, oh, you want to hear a song? And I was like, all right. And it just kind of naturally turned into the game. Like, I didn't see it coming. Yeah. She's like, you want to hear a song? And so, like, I'm like, yeah, what song? Put it on. I was like, oh, that reminds me of this song. And, like, I did it back. We went back to back till 1.30 in the morning, which I'm not proud of. <laughs> <laughs> what grade is she in? She's She's nine. <laughs> she's in fourth grade yeah it's a little late it's a little late yeah and 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 i'm i'm aware like at midnight i was like all right honey you got to go to bed like it's getting late and she's like i've got another song and i was like well, i get that she knows you too well yeah she's like well she is your mini me well you know what she said to me this was the this is where i was just like this is amazing she goes i don't know why but i just i love sad songs and i was like <gasps> oh god dude i was like have you heard ben harper and like we just started. You should not be happy about that. She's got it all. She's got uh, every every little weird. This thing. is a daughter. Yeah, it's gonna be rough. <laughs> yeah, you better buckle in. Yeah, it's it's gonna be rough. But we we sat there trading sad songs, going back and forth. I'm playing old stuff, new stuff. She's playing songs with beats. Like she's like, wait till this beat drops. I've never heard her say that in my life. Wow. I was like, Wait till the beat drops. That's impressive. Yeah, and she's like, watch this. She puts her hand up, and she's like, oh, boom. I was like, oh, snap. I was like, that's a... And then I realized, I was like, I'm hanging out with a nine-year-old, drinking beers till 1.30 in the morning. I was like, what have I become? Brendan's like, let me play you a little Eric Clapton. This song's about when his son died. Hey, his son uh, fell out of a window. Yeah. You're going to love this. Yeah. You're going to say Hey, we're going to drop the beat. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was wild. We were going back and forth, but it was like... It was the first time that she and I had ever had that. And she turns to me and she goes, Dad, this is what I want to do for my birthday. And I was like, just sit. She goes, yeah, let's sit around out here, like get some people together and just go song for song all night long. And I was like, that's kind of what I want to do for your birthday. But that'll be a lame party. (laughs) Oh, the kids won't get it. They just won't get it. We're like, sit down. We're listening to an acapella. (laughs) Did the wife find out about it? Yeah. Yeah. How'd that go? She was like, you can't have her up that late. And I was like, I know I told her that at midnight. And then I told her that at one. <laughs> and then she was just, I finally got her. I, I finally the little got voices her. in your head weren't telling you this was kind of going too long. <laughs> oh, at, at the end of the night, at like midnight, I started drinking scotch. I was like sitting out there like, like, yes, yes, yes. And I was like, I was like, hey, you want a seltzer water? It's like put a can in her hand. Yeah, <laughs> like, but you know what, though, for all intents and purposes, She's going to remember that night for oh, yeah. ever. And you'll remember that night forever. I will forever. And she was like, this is the best night I've ever had. And I was like, I agree. Yeah, that was, <laughs> was like, like uh, this is amazing. Halloween night, we've been out trick-or-treating and we were headed home and we went up this one street and it was all the lights were off. Moon was out full. I mean, the moon was so bright Halloween. It was casting shadows. Oh, yeah. And it was just the two boys and I walking down this long, dark street just talking. And it was like, how cool is it? It was super cool. Like, we yeah. don't, it's just, you spend all your time with your kids, but a lot of times you're, you're doing you're, stuff. You're, you're dad yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what exactly. I mean? You're like, no, tighten yeah. up on this. Do like, this. we were having, we were just like three dudes walking down the street, just talking about the night and just having a good time and laughing. And it's at like, one point, she pulled, she was like, this song has a bad word in it. And I was like, <laughs> honey, tonight we're around the fire pit. Yep. Anything goes. Doesn't matter. She's like, Oh, fire pit this rules! One's great then, yeah. And sure enough, two live crew. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Say this yeah. comes from South Florida. Welcome to the fuck shop. She's like those guys love cats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> and she even she even at one point she goes, let me go inside. She ran inside. She came out and she has like a whiteboard, 
And on the back of it, she has a list of all these songs that she's heard that she likes. I had no idea she had such a thing. She didn't put them on the whiteboard. Like she puts songs on the whiteboard, but they start to fade off. But the yeah. ones that don't fade, she writes on the back. So she turned this thing over. Well, well you, you and the a, wife do a listen list. to music a lot in your house. There's a lot of music in yeah. the house. Yeah. So it was it was cool though because I just never knew she had that. Like, yeah. I didn't know she's picking up on it. Well, yeah. you you'll appreciate this because I mean, for the most part, me and the girls and their mom we listen to music all the time. Yeah. But uh, Emma. This was, uh, I guess she was a seventh grade, maybe maybe sixth grade. But anyways, her course teacher sent us an email that said, just an FYI, your daughter sings really well, and she's the only one I know in the entire class that knows all the words to every Foreigner and Journey song. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I was like, well, I responded back, and I said, that's because I have vinyl. <laughs> I got an yep. email from a teacher once that was like, you know, your kids knew that today was Bob Marley's birthday. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I was no like, I wonder how they knew that. February Must have been that shady neighbor I have. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. I knew I rem- that too. I remember my youngest, she said, the very first time I started pulling them out when they actually were paying attention to it, she looked at the record and was like, that is the biggest CD I've ever fucking seen. <laughs> Without the fucking part. But yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's good stuff. But you've got the, yeah, you got a good vinyl collection. Or you can play some good stuff there, too. Yeah, the vinyl collection keeps growing. You know, Brendan like pop music. He likes obscure shit. I, yeah, but there was a lot of pop. I had to, like, I had to go back and show her, like, some good pop music. That's, that gets tough. Look, good pop music. <laughs> There's good pop music. Yeah, there, it's it pop exists. because it's popular. Like, I yeah. mean. No. Nah. I mean, as that much as That new Taylor wanna, Swift album, I don't give a shit. Yeah. That, tell, that album's dope. If you don't like any of Taylor's, I mean, all her not all her stuff that charts yeah. is good stuff. Like, it's catchy. Yeah. We were watching Sing earlier tonight. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. Yeah. Great movie. And the Shake It Off's in it. And you just, like, bebop into it. Yeah. like. Oh, the next night the whole family came out and we played music off for about three hours just with with all of us. Yeah. I was like, I was like, honey, gotta come out here. Like, there's something happening. Like, they're yeah. they're it's super really, cool. <laughs> like, I don't know. My girls were really good with uh, Taylor being country, but when she went pop, they just kind of faded away. My girls, and I think it's because I've trained them to, to say it, but they're like, I liked her better when she was country. Oh, really? That, that I, new album is is, it? is sick. But even the next day, like my 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 other daughter was coming out and she was like, that reminds me of this song in Hamilton. And like then she's playing Hamilton bombs, and I'm like, okay, this. And my wife at one point was like, that beat right there, that's big pun. She was like, check this out. And then like, boom, I was like, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> that's all we did this. Weekend. I haven't seen or heard Hamilton. Is it really good? I'm not kidding. It's worth a it's worth a watch. Like if you if you have Disney Plus and can just can watch it, uh-huh. man, it is it is absolutely worth your time. Like my daughter was so hype on it that I was like, all right, you know, I got to watch this thing with her. And we were about 15 minutes into it. And I turned to her and I was like, honey, this is really good. Like you've turned me on to something that's impressive. And it's funny. Like they have songs in there that are that have obvious throwbacks. There's one where he's like, these are the 10 something commandments. And it's like he basically does the 10 crack commandments by Biggie. But obviously tweaked Uh you know and it's like you can see all of these influences that come from older rap songs that you know that show up here and then other ones that are just good all on their own yeah and the stories you know the stories obviously they've taken some creative liberties to say the least but at the same time it it was good i enjoyed it cool i would recommend checking it out you're not going to regret it like that two hours you won't be like i blew it it's worth your time I know my younger son and my wife watched it because he was all into it because my niece is into it. Yeah. And always playing the music and singing it and all that stuff. So he got into the music before he even got into the movie. I got I so so uh, Atlanta Jimmy. Different different. Jimmy. There are multiple Jimmy's. Yeah. Not young Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Not young Jimmy, but Atlanta Jim. Uh, shout out Screen Door Mortgage. If anyone needs a mortgage. Go That's check right. Out Screen Door Mortgage. Now is a good time to get a mortgage, but rates are changing. So now is the time. Yeti cups. Not really. Yeti cups. Well, they're, they're still good. They're still good, but we're starting to see that. Anything below four, which Fed's keeping our officially low through 2022. I like your attitude, Stu. See, this is what Stu knows. But even Atlanta Jimmy, who's like kind of like hardcore yeah. about a lot of his music. Like he likes some death metal. He likes some hardcore rap. Like he likes a lot of stuff. One day he's like, 
hey man, have you heard this Hamilton soundtrack? <laughs> I was like, and I, I was like, right, he's gonna start making fun of me or something. So I was like treading lightly. I was like, yeah, man, it's pretty good. My kids like it. He's like, no, man, it's amazing. You need to spend some time with it. I was like, oh, all right, cool. He's serious. <laughs> he digs it. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Threw me for a loop. Threw me for a loop. Mm. It won't know what else threw people for a loop. I don't want to talk sports too much, but last night. When Nick Chubb was breaking away with no time left. Oh, yeah. Or, or like a minute left in the game. Four and a half point spread. He stepped out of, <laughs> stepped out of bounds and blew it. Everyone who had the brown spread got blown yep. up. That, and you know some fantasy football was won and lost over that. So much. I love seeing something like that where it's an obvious, obvious like touchdown. There's nobody within 20 yards of him. And he does the right thing by the team. No glory. Runs the clock. Yeah, he did the right thing by the team. They would have gone up by 10, but God forbid they have a minute left and they can. But if he goes out of bounds, kneel, kneel, but, kneel, but it's over. So he can't win for losing because Vegas could be in his pocket one way or the other. I'm just I'm just glad he did the right thing. And I right. love, I I love a horrific <laughs> bad beat. Yeah. That's a horrific bad beat. That's a, you know, well, speaking of a good beat, though, on sports related. Oh, I'm sure God, everybody this, saw the uh, John Rom, the three. Skips across the pond for a hole in one. Oh, the Masters practice. Yeah, on, Dude, how <laughs> sick was that? I was like, it's one, like it's, it's a lifetime event to get a hole in one. Yeah, but then and to then do the a skip across the pond, to skip, skip it three times one? across the water and roll it five, forty-five. Especially feet. when it's an intentional skip. Yeah, yeah he, put he did it that there. on purpose. Yeah, that was that was badass. I had Nick Chubb, and we were watching that game. And he's on my yeah, fantasy you, team. I was like, he went out of bounds. You still beat me. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Yeah, that stuff was, I don't know, man. I, I love seeing stuff like that go down. That's man. why I hate gambling. That is why I hate gambling. Dude, speaking of the Masters, when so the the mustache you know thing. Yeah. We, we, did, a, we did a contest where however much money you, you brought in during this particular three-day period, However much money, the highest raiser would get the number one golfer. And, and so then, on and so forth. And yeah. down the line. Well, I didn't have any money in my coffers, and my one of my daughters hit me up with 28 bucks. And I was like, perfect. Nice. Like, I don't have anything. So I got 28 bucks. I ended up getting the bad guy from the Goonies. Yeah, in, for in, telly. In, in for telly. <laughs> I'm like, I got What was that like? You were, it was like he was the, the 67th yeah. ranked golfer going into that. That dirty goonie killer ended up pulling fifth place. Yeah. I ended up getting a match. A hundred bucks, right? Yeah. That's and, awesome. And an Amazon gift card is getting sent, which I'm going to give to my daughter. Yeah. And be like, thank you for being Here charitable. You go. That's awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I actually had way more money than you just by chance. Like, it wasn't like I did anything. 66 people had more money than yeah, me. Yeah, and like, I got a pretty good, go <laughs> I got a really good golfer. It, that had really good odds, and it was, I forget his ranking, but it was Jason Day, and that dude didn't even make the cut. That's so frustrating. And here comes the Fratelli brother. Yeah. You know, straight off of trying to kill a bunch of kids. <laughs> yeah. It pulls it off. It was fantastic. It was, th mm. that was, that was an unexpected treat. These are the things the that they do it in 4K to keep us engaged and make it fun, you know? And that's what's so awesome. It's those corporate sponsorships that yep. come in and go, this is your money for your infrastructure. That's right. why every dollar goes to the charity. Well, because the corporate people will be like, hey, we're going to donate five grand to charity, but here's $1,000 to help motivate the sellers. Yep. We're going to get you hats or, or masks. Right. The masks bring in donations, right? Well, that $100 you won goes to your mustache. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't see the money. Yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. the money. Yeah. I'm more excited about getting. Well, it's like today we had the match, and that was Estes uh, shipping uh, did the match for five thousand yeah. so dollars. Shout like, out to Estes. Awesome. Yeah, you know they hooked it up, and that was that was sweet. Yeah, and those those kind of things are just just exciting. But the way that even the M4K guys in this ridiculous time, because how difficult is it to motivate and keep people excited? Really hard when it's all virtual. Yep. But to do like that masters thing, like yeah, I was amped up, and I was trying to find a way to scrounge some dollars, and then my daughter donates twenty eight. I was like jackpot, yeah. And at twenty eight, just having to be like three more dollars, and the other guy to move me up to sixty seven. Yep. It keeps you going. It's it fun. Keeps you going. It is fun, man. And 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 anyone who doesn't get a chance to grow this year, just donate. Go over to m four k richmond dot org. Donate to the cause. Anyone on the Pallet House team. I would love to have, but honestly, you could donate to any one of those growers. You could pick a dude out of a hat. 
and it's going. You to can a good still run. join our team if you really are interested. Like, you could join today. And last year, the rookie of the year he was showed up guy, two days before the end or something. He showed no. He signed up the day of the stash bash. What? And raised like a thousand dollars or something. And showed up to the stash bash and got rookie of the year. One of the, I think they had two rookies of the year, and he was one of them because <laughs> well, he, he just, got like a huge corporate sponsorship. Yeah. He'd been talking about it and made it happen. I mean, that yeah. kind of stuff. That's sweet, but you'd be surprised what you get if you ask for it. And if, but if you, that's that's a fact. Yeah. It, it, but if you can't grow this year, you should grow next year. Yes, like we really want should. you on our team always. We want this team. I, I want this team to be fifty people strong. We've got the listeners. I know. Like, we could do that. Yeah. Like, that's not even a big ratio of the listeners. No. Like, we could do that. Yep. It'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. But it's been growing. I'm loving the way the rookies are coming up this year. Yes. They're kicking butt. They, they really are. Our rookies are. are. Our rookies are, are doing better than, than us tenured guys. Yeah. Some now, of them. Some, some of that's because, you know, we've lost our big donators. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they're growing. But they're making so much more money by growing. Yes. It's, it's awesome. It's we'll limited. take it all day. Absolutely. But this is it's your chance. It's only been eight hours. Not even. I mean, 12 hours. Give me a chance. <laughs> $20 motivation. <laughs> exactly. Just, yeah. like, rolled that snowball down the hill. It keeps going. I love it. If you haven't had a chance to go over to m4krichmond.org, please do so. Support the charities that we're, we're trying to help out. There are... There's not a there's not a charity in there that you wouldn't want to help in and of itself. Yeah, and that's what makes this so. And unique. donate to anyone. I mean, we prefer to be ICPH, but if you want to go a different team, not Balzer, we're okay with that too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't see that's that coming. Good stuff. That's funny. Hey, they want to come at us. We'll come at them. They've 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 picked a scab, and it's it, it hurts, and I'm not happy about it. Well, I mean. Break the fourth wall. We have a lot of friends on Balzer, and it's a fun rivalry. It is. It's a great rivalry yeah. because they're not the ones that have all these huge corporate sponsorships. Yeah. So they don't. They blow us out of the water. Like they're scrappy, man. Yep. Yeah. They're scrappy, and and the two I'm up head head to head with. They're they're beating me now. Yep. And six hours ago, I was handling. The <laughs> I don't know how this happened. So, but seriously, fine. guys out there, just just take two seconds, ten dollars. It goes a long ways. If you it got does. more, it does. Do it. We'd appreciate it. But this and go is, check this out the charities. Like don't, I was going to say, just take do, it from just, us. Yeah, don't. You can go to the website and just donate to the person. Read up on the charities. The website tells you all about all the charities, and it's a hundred percent. And look at that website that we've put together. It's a clear indication that we're not spending the money on things like websites. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want the rundown again? <laughs> but we're going to be donating. I think we signed a we signed something with Children's Hospital for we're going to give them a hundred thousand dollars for the next five years, and they're going to name a performance center after the M4K Richmond. Yeah, people. it's going to be the Mustaches for Kids yeah. Auditorium. Like I really hope that happens. Yeah, that's going to yeah. be awesome. Can Obviously. we win that and get it to the ITPH Auditorium for Kids? Actually, you know what? We should just we should just, <laughs> just run another charity that will run in like June. And like maybe Go against it. maybe maybe we could just like sponsor tanks and breweries. Like, <laughs> this beer was brewed in the inside the pallet house tank. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That one will not be as uh, as charitable, but we'll still be doing our yeah. part. We'll we'll make it work. Maybe a mass com wing at VCU. Yeah, do you, do you want to yeah. read? Did you want to read some of the charities? Just, the it's uh, ask, which is uh, oh, he's got the charities. Yes, we should. Yeah, uh, making life better for ch children with cancer. We've got Scan, Stop Child Abuse Now, the Children's Hospital at Richmond at VCU, Feed More, which is we you know, you know, discussed that one, Cameron Gay Gallier Foundation, which is close to my heart, uh, talking about anxiety and teenage depression, Friends um, Associated for Children, which is dealing with uh, literacy and development skills, Boys and Girls Club of Richmond, and then we got the new one, which is, or not too new, but uh, Richmond Friends of the Homeless. Um, and I, like I said, um, all of them are going to get 100% of your donations. It's going to be uh, a great year. And I think we will actually, yeah. I, I think we can, we think we'll get, I think we're going to, we think we'll break the, the 368. I think we're going to beat 368. I'm going to be positive. I think we're going to do it. It's a tough year, man. I don't know. We'll see. It's we'll see. But I'll tell you what, the guys have all been motivated. Everyone's out there doing their part. It's, it's exciting, but. There's no gimmies in that. That's a lot of money, man. With your help, we can do it. That's true. That's true. 
Look, so let's stay positive. Yep. Don't forget that we do have a Venmo account. It's at Inside the Pallet House. If you want to donate money to the podcast, don't. That would be great because we'll get Brent another jacket besides his dickies. Dude, this jacket's dope. <laughs> if you want to donate, if you don't want to go on the website and donate and you just want to Venmo us money... Just we'll put it in there. Put it put it in the Venmo, and we'll, know, we'll swap it over, and it'll go right to Troy. Yeah, just <laughs> just know that we're not, you know, this month we're not soliciting money from you for the podcast. We don't want it. This one's, we're taking this month on the arm. This is, uh, this there's 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 bigger, bigger situations that we want to try to help out. So please. And we've had some listeners donate. Um, Flores, the Flores family donated. Uh, I'm sure I'm leaving a bunch off. The screen door um, mortgage came out. Yeah. The, uh, Jimmy in Atlanta, he came out, donated a significant amount of money to a bunch of people. Like he divided it out a bunch amongst people. And it's just nice. That's awesome to see. It's been. Oh, he did. <laughs> I don't know. Holy. I don't know who he donated <laughs> to exactly. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't not. care. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It it does get the the competitive juices going though. I understand that. Like I'll see like a good friend donate to someone else, and I'll be like, "Huh, okay." But it's cool. It's all going to the kids. No hard feelings. No not. It's a good thing, man. It really is. So, yeah. So many listeners have done so so many great things. So we we thank you guys. We have a great we have a great uh, great bunch of listeners that are out there. Despite what we say when we're trying to solicit reviews and things like that, we you guys are awesome. You got you gals are awesome. <laughs> Certainly appreciate the support for uh, for some of the more charitable things we do. And, I, of course, during the rest of the year for the things you do for us personally. Yes. So thank you guys <laughs> so Agreed. much for tuning in. We'll be here next week. You can always uh, reach out to us on the Facebook page, Inside the Pallet House Podcast. You can always find us on our Gmail account, which is uh, inside the pallet house at gmail.com. I just forgot I don't have the button. I got to like do all this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> production value is going through yeah, the roof. <laughs> behind the scenes. Sorry, I break it down the fourth wall. I forgot we don't have a. Uh, it's okay. Oh, curses. Somebody pat. It's all good. So um, I can't. Uh, I got it. We're good. Stu, you crushed that. <laughs> way you to, gave me so many. <laughs> two seconds. Do way, something. Way to get us through the, the <laughs> weird shit. That was brilliant. Give me two seconds. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, thank you all so much for tuning in week in and week out, man. It, it it really does it does mean a lot to us that you continue to support us. If you haven't had a chance, honestly, head over to m4krichmond.org, send a donation the way. And uh, if you want to find us on Instagram or Twitter, give us some topics, you can always do so at ITPH Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll be talking to you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Peace out. That was a pretty good podcast, don't you think? I do, Troy. I do. <laughs> <laughs>